Hello there, guys. Welcome back to another episode of ENF TV. Today, we're joined by Brendan May, Managing Director at Hotel Res Bot. Uh, Brendan, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. And I, I know uh, a number of our audience members are actually going to be really interested to hear uh, your thoughts on a number of points that we're going to be talking about today. Um, so, Brendan, how we like to start the show generally is just hearing a bit about you first, about your background, uh, how you sort of came to starting your own hotel tech company, of, of all things. Um, uh, so, yeah, please do. Tell us a bit about yourself. Sure, well, yeah. So, so I'm a hotel guy. I'm originally born and raised in, in Canada and uh, did a, a Bachelor of Commerce in, in hotel management. And uh, from there, I started working with Hilton, did their elevator management program and moved on through operations and luxury properties here in, in Germany. I've been now in, in Germany for about 20 years. Um, but at some point in my operations career, I got dragged off actually into consulting for electronic distribution, which morphed into um, working for ideas, revenue management solutions and helping people implement uh, revenue management solutions. And then I moved on and, and um, basically wrote the business plan between behind Snapshot, which got picked up by, by Shiji. And so I've been in the tech side of, of hotels for quite a while. In fact, I originally, before I switched to hotels, I'd originally applied for um, chemical physics. So I've always kind of tried to combine this science and hospitality management, two things that maybe don't naturally mix, but somehow they do mix in, in my brain. So it's a bit of a no brainer for me that, you know, 20 years later, I'm, I'm sitting there building technology that really helps the people in the operations in hotels, stuff that I was doing 20 years ago. But now that I have the tech skills and the hotel experience, I kind of put those together to to build interesting things that help solve real problems in hotels. Definitely. I mean, it's, it's one of these things that uh, I've heard a number of times, uh, sort of this side of things is very much a, a science, but also an art. And I suppose it's just a case of uh, amalgamating the two, if you like. Um, I, I suppose this actually brings us on quite nicely to my first question, which is, I suppose from your perspective and from your experience, what do you see the future of uh, sort of a, a people, computer, AI cooperation sort of going forward? What, what do you see uh, sort of, I suppose, from your perspective? Yeah, well, I've been sort of working on in, in my brain for, for probably 10 years, actually, a, a vision of, of, you know, human and computer cooperation. Um, I often think that, you know, Hollywood and, and movies, they lead us astray. You know, Terminator, a great movie from my, my childhood. Um, and and it, it's so often, or Hal, it, it's so often this concept of, you know, human versus computer. Or we talk about, um, you know, the big chess games versus computers, and more recently, AlphaGo. And so often, it's this human versus computer. But, but actually, that has not nothing to do with our reality. Um, every or most of us are using a, a, a mobile phone to do so many things. I, uh, I've certainly outsourced more simple things like I don't know any telephone numbers anymore and also much more complex things to my phone and, and my entire environment. So I, I guess this started with me when I was working with, with revenue management, seeing their stuff that humans can do that a system will never be able to do and vice versa actually this is actually called more of x principle um but it, it's it's really nice and we're kind of lucky in that case that actually computers are really excelling at the things that we as humans either don't like to do or can't do very well yeah. and and so this brings me always to this idea of how can we put them together and and i really believe that this is you know part of the future journey of the hospitality industry is um finding ways to automate the stuff that the guest doesn't care whether it's coming from a human or not. And, and I had a, I mean, I had a great conversation with someone out of a luxury property a number of months ago, and, and they told me actually about a situation um, where the number one feedback from their guests was 
actually, we'd really like a coffee machine in the room. Okay. And for 10 years, they decided, actually, the guests don't really want a coffee machine in the room because that's not what luxury is. <laughs> luxury is, you know, a perfectly done cappuccino or, or whatever coffee specialty delivered to your room with a smile from a butler. And, and what I find so hilarious behind that is in the end, actually, people were like, well, you know, sometimes luxury is standing in my underwear, pressing a button and getting a halfway decent coffee <laughs> without having to talk to a person. So, you know, th this is where it, it depends on what goals we're trying to achieve. That, yeah. that it depends on whether a human has to do that part or, or a machine has to do that part. But the truth is, is even in that automated coffee machine, there's, you know, somebody in behind there servicing that machine as well. So there is human and you know, machine cooperation there, even just to provide that that automated coffee in the morning. Yeah. Do, do you see certain obstacles for, I suppose, tech innovation? And if so, what have those notoriously been? <laughs> well, um, I basically wrote an entire business plan on on what I view as the number one obstacle in, in hospitality. And, and that is actually integrations and the poor way we do um, integrations in particularly with property management systems. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're very complex systems and, and integration is a challenge. Um, but I believe this is actually the thing that's holding um, the industry back from innovation. It's not hoteliers that say, I don't want innovation and I don't want to do new things. It's, it's actually us providers not getting together like they have in so many other industries to make this faster, easier, and smoother. And I mean, I know my colleagues and PMSs are working on this, um, but, uh, but you know, un unfortunately, it's, there's still a long way to go. So I do understand um, that, that a lot of people historically have been, let's say, in, in the hospitality management, a little bit reticent to implement technology because they've had poor experiences in the past with integrations. So right. anyone who's you know bringing a system to market has to make sure they've got that part done. Sure. Okay. And I suppose in terms of, I know obviously this is a hot topic at the moment, um, but obviously what do you feel the long-term impact of SARS-CoV? Uh, sorry, COV2 uh, will be on the hospitality industry? So I, I'm actually quite positive on, on the long-term impact, to be honest. I, I think it's, it's a painful period right now, but, but I actually see it like this, that, that even, or, or I start like this, I believe um, COVID-19 has really accelerated a lot of trends. It hasn't necessarily brought in completely new things that weren't happening at all, of course, other than social distancing and so on. But in terms of what hotels are doing, it's accelerating trends. And we think about, you know, automated check-in um, or mobile check-in. Well, I know hotels that have been doing this for 10 years. Um, you know, even, even if we think about a Citizen M, which is a kind of self-check-in, kiosk check-in, um, they've been doing this for, for literally 15 years. And, and I mean, they've been running their property at around 20 to 25% of the normal staffing. And so they're in a, in a COVID situation. Okay, the demand goes down and they're not as struggling mm. as everyone else to adjust their cost base to their current revenue. So, so I actually believe that in a lot of cases, it's forcing people to do things that they've been thinking about for many years, but haven't yet done because there was no big push to do it. And, and I do believe that we've made the mistake in the hospitality industry for a long time of actually giving people boring, painful tasks to do that should never have been done by a human. And, and I believe it goes deeper, actually, than just, you know, this, this cost driving situation. I believe this also is connected to the big problem we had before COVID, which is finding qualified staff. Um, because 
you know, the qualified staff, the people that can do it are getting annoyed at having to do all of this manual labor and leaving. And so we're stuck with the people who are willing to do manual labor, but actually don't always understand hospitality. Sure. So uh, coming back to that partnership topic, I really think that it's about finding a way to have the technology do the boring, repetitive stuff that no human really wants to do yeah. and having the human do that human stuff that, that is important to the guest and, and so on. The guest doesn't care um, in many ways how the product is delivered or what the process is behind, whether it's a lot of work or less work to get that done. Mm. What they care about is how fast is it done? How well is it done? And, and am I getting what I need? And I believe that, you know, humans with the right technology can do that. And over time, or, or not even over time, but I believe right now, hotels are forced to find ways to survive at lower demand levels. Yeah. So that if I put on my asset manager hat, the future actually looks great for hotels. Because if we get into a position where we can handle and, and then scale this out, and keep our lower cost base, then actually we, we are in a position of, of improving the business model of hotels into the future, to be honest. Do, do you think, because this is something I've been sort of talking to a few people about, um, and like anything, you know, any disruption can be um, embraced uh, and sort of seen as an opportunity to innovate and get creative. Um, but what I've seen is it's almost... The hotel industry has always been known for being archaic in a lot of the ways that it does things. Um, and with this disruption, as it's come in such a terrible, you know, with such terrible consequences, don't get me wrong, but it's almost created the necessity now for change rather than, oh, we need to change at some point or we will, we'll address this at some point. It's now become a time where you either change or you won't go anywhere. Your competition will then adapt. They will, will, they will drive forward. Yet the people that have always said, oh, well, you know, we'll change our systems, we'll address it, we'll, we'll look at costs and so on. Now they're just having to do it. There's no choice. Is that, would that be something fair to say? 100%. I mean, it's a huge catalyst. And, and even, even ourselves, right? Like we help hotels automate email bookings, which, you know, sounds pretty unsexy, but it's, it's actually applying relatively um, complex technology to read the email out and, and automate processes behind it and then, you know, leverage that, that human aspect. And 12 months ago, I would be talking to people and, and you know, they, they, they love the idea, but they'd be and many of them would be a little afraid of what we're doing because, yeah. you know, what you can read in a full length email and understand, you know, the availability rates and in inventory, you kind of see the, the eyes of the res agents glaze over with a little bit of fear. Yeah. Um, and it's very similar to when I was talking about revenue management automation, which has the same thing, actually. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I think the human is still an important part of it. But what's been so interesting is once COVID happened, of course, you know, the first couple of weeks, there was the, the shock and nobody knew what to do. Mm. And then the calls started coming. And it was people I was talking to 12 months ago, and they say, hey, Brendan, you're still doing that email automation thing? Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, we kind of need it right now. <laughs> and and you know, what we've seen is, is actually in, in a majority of properties, the volume of email has gone up at the same time that the overall occupancy has decreased. And if you think about that challenge for hotels, we're trying to cut down to our skeleton crew, um, but we actually have more to do and we're earning less money. This is not a good situation. No. Uh, but on the other hand, you can notice the kind of communication that people are having with the hotels. It's things like, tell me about your COVID preparedness. Yes. So they're not yet asking about the booking, but that's the next email. You know, like the, the first one is tell me about the preparedness. Um, PricewaterhouseCoopers did a report not too long ago mm -hmm. saying 52% of people are unhappy with the COVID preparedness information that they're receiving from hotels. Really? That's a, that's and a this is a huge, huge topic. So, you know, if half the people aren't satisfied with it, and this wasn't just people, if I recall correctly, this was travelers. 
Right. So this is very specifically people who want to know, will I be safe in your hotel? Yes. And if they're not happy, I mean, they're not booking you. No, this is it. This is it. And I suppose, you know, you've mentioned obviously the, a number of conversations that you've had and how obviously your business is, is sort of helping its clients, I suppose. What, what's been going on with you guys more recently? Yeah, so, um, I mean, one of the first things that we did when, when COVID hit um, is, of course, we noticed a completely different type of email coming in. So we noticed a whole bunch of cancellations coming in. So one of the first things we did was go out and build a, a basically a, a voucher process, had it done within about a week for all of our hotels that are getting swamped by, by email. So we, I mean, just to explain our product briefly, what we have is, is an artificial intelligence that reads the incoming email and then goes off, checks the availability rates and inventory if, for example, it's a booking request, mm -hmm. and then sits there and basically waits for the agent to go into Outlook, come in, and then they can choose one of those pre-shopped um, offers already. So they save all of that time and so on. And of course, suddenly, it's not about offers anymore when COVID hit. It's it's all about cancellations. Like, oh my God. Okay, so um, you know, there's, there's a number of processes there. There's OTA cancellations. Of course, as a hotel, you can't cancel them directly because then you pay the commission. So you have to kind of nicely reroute them back to the OTA to cancel without getting them upset. So we built that process really quickly for them to drop them right off at the booking.com login page, you know, as opposed to just saying, hey, mess off, go deal with booking.com. We also, for all of hotels, because of course, advanced purchase was a big topic. Um, um, you know, do you rebid? Do you give the money back? Do you not? This is, you know, even on a political level here in Germany, and you know, the government was was looking at it whether they changed the rules and and all the rest. So we jumped in and said, you know what, offer a voucher with, and the hotel could choose, you know, 10% food and beverage voucher on top or something like that. That worked amazingly well to get people to then um, accept a voucher because what we saw was people were trying to get them to rebook in March, right? And they're like, I don't know how long this is going to happen. I don't know even when the lockdown is going to be over. So everybody was saying, just give me the money, give me the money. As soon as we sent them the voucher option, they went, oh, okay, yeah, I'll take the voucher, I'll take the voucher. Um, so it, it's, it's those kinds of things. And since then, we've been you know, ex expanding our, our tool on things like COVID readiness information. Yeah. So we would have, you know, uh, uh, well, we already had the option for a number of different hotel descriptions in the email offer that goes out to the guest. Right. But of course, we built very quickly another one, which is your COVID readiness information, because that's obviously one of the key topics to, to get a conversion. And we also released the frequently asked questions as well, because this was the other thing that people are doing. No longer booking, they're asking questions first. So um, it's actually brought our product quite a lot further along our product vision, not necessarily the way in the order that we thought we were going to build these things. Um, but uh, but our, our tool is basically now supporting all of those use cases that a reservation agent has and, and automates that part that's just boring data entry or looking stuff up. Um, so it, it's definitely had an impact on on us and, and how we've adapted the product for the hotels as well because their world changed from one day to the next as well yeah completely it's um well as we as we keep saying unprecedented times we don't know what to expect but it's about um being as proactive but also i suppose quickly reactive at, at the same time um there was a question that i had come up with a airline specialist actually and it was all around tech who we should be using and so on and he alluded to the fact that um our usual uh, sort of tech dinosaurs or giants, if you like, the likes of Ideas and, uh, and Duetta and so on, they've always sort of suited a purpose. They've always obviously innovated where they can. But do you think, again, with the disruption that we're seeing, we could start seeing, I suppose, the more, well, the new kids on the block? These guys that are able to, well, have been innovating, they're providing something new at a relatively cheaper cost do you believe from again from your perspective that this is their time or do you think that, that it will be the legacy systems that are still the ones that will own this area of the market 
Good question. I mean, I, I think there are a number of different competing uh, motivators. So um, I, I, for example, I, I mean, I, I go a little bit more generic than, than the revenue management systems, because that's, that's a whole other topic unto it itself, um, where, and, and I'm, I, I'm at least not so familiar of, of anyone that's so innovative that they have the solution for revenue management in, in COVID. Um, half of the tools are, are, as in half of your toolkit as a revenue manager, just aren't there if you're not selling out. So it's it's a painful time for a, a lot of us. And and I'm you know a former revenue manager, so I I feel that that pain. But if we look kind of to the more generic systems, and I'm I'm thinking here about property management systems. Sure. So, um, if I'm a hotel, that's um getting a big maintenance bill right now at the end of the year and and i'm closed and you know i've tried to have the conversation or or i'm you know we're at i don't know 15 percent occupancy like some in amsterdam that i was speaking to the other day then that's certainly going to cause pain for me if i haven't been able to to drop that cost and if i look sort of across the road and i see some of these new kids like an apaleo or a muse Mm -hmm. um that's you know, potentially putting me at a lower cost than my maintenance cost for another system, yeah. then suddenly this becomes a more realistic opportunity short term. And then when you look at the fact that some of these tools are thinking and, and you know are supporting integrations and automations on a deeper level, then that suddenly it becomes something where, you know, a year ago you used to say, well, no CTO was ever fired for choosing opera. Well, maybe that's changed. You know, I don't know. Um, And and I don't want to nail opera because they're doing a lot of stuff as as well to to modify and update themselves. Um, But I do think that that it's become a greater opportunity for those kinds of systems. Um, In the end, though, I I, I mean, I do believe it's, it's actually... Um, if you look at the startup world, like how do startups think in most cases? Mm. Well, there's guys like Oki out there. Um, they're kind of similar to us. They have they take one problem that usually is solved with either not at all or with a lot of human effort. Right. And they say, look, for a month, low monthly price, I can solve this issue. And... You know, definitely there's been a lot of demand for upsell tools to automate that process right now because, you know, every cent counts. There's been a lot of demand for for tools like ours, which, you know, helps you cut 75% of the effort and also helps you, you know, make sure you convert every direct booking, which is really important right now. So I, I do think that there is, there has been and there will continue to be a willingness to try out, you know, those those startup type solutions that look at one problem and solves this one problem, because you know if, if you look at it and that's the problem you happen to have, then it, it's it's you know much easier today to make those decisions. I got a call from a, a chain um, in the Middle East a couple of days ago, and um, and and it was kind of funny because he explained his situation to me and he said, so, you know, we're using COVID to centralize into a a CRO. We've been wanting to do this for years, but, you know, now is finally the time because it's it's doable, basically taking the people out of the property. But then we looked at the numbers and we realized 70% of what the people in the CRO would be doing is answering emails. And then we realized we needed a solution. And it was kind of funny because he didn't know what we did at the beginning of the conversation. So he actually said to me, so, you know, we're looking for something to automatically respond to the emails, read this and do this and so on. And he's like, and now's the time you tell me that's not what you do. And I actually said, no, that's exactly what you do. <laughs> so, you know, there, there, there are people out there who 12 months ago, he had this, you know, ephemeral idea of doing a CRO that he's been thinking about for 10 years, Mm -hmm. but now suddenly he's got to do the CRO and he realizes he has a concrete need for a solution to help him make that CRO efficient. And so change does open up the doors for organizations like us that are, you know, good at one particular thing. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, Well, Brendan, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule. I really do appreciate you joining us today. 
Tom, thank you very much for having me. It was uh, really enjoyable. Good. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode. And make sure you see who's on next week's episode now. <laughs>